In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the operators we have in Python. And to get started, I'm going to be showing you the arithmetic operators, which allow us to do some very basic math. And let's get started immediately by creating a result, which is going to equal, let's say, 1 plus 1. So of course, plus is the first arithmetic operator we have. And when we print this result, you're going to notice we're going to get 2 as an answer. Now we can do something very similar by adding a minus. And that's going to give us the result of zero. We can also multiply in Python. So let's change this to a three and this one to a two and add an asterisk here. So three times two is going to end up being six. And just like when you learned in algebra, you can go ahead and add parentheses and make sure you get your order of operations in order. So now we got three times two minus four. Or if you want to do this one first, you can do three minus two times four. And of course, three minus two is one and one times four is four. So everything works like a normal algebra expression. But up next, we have the division operator. So we can go ahead and divide 10 by three, and we're going to get a very long answer of 3.333. The division symbol will always return a float, so it's going to be quite precise. Now we can move on to the special operators, such as the modulus operator, which is just a percent symbol. And what this does is try to fit three into 10 as many times as it can. And then whatever the remainder is, it's going to return that. So of course, three goes into 10 only three times with a remainder of one. And that's why we're going to get one as the answer. If this was 11, for example, we're going to get two. And if this was 12, we're going to get zero because three fits perfectly into 12 four times. Now, earlier I showed you that if we divide 10 by three, we're going to get a very long decimal. And there's a way to avoid this, and that is using the floor division operator. And it's just two divide symbols or two slashes. And when we run the program, you're going to notice we're only going to get three because it's going to round it to the whole number. And one thing you need to note in Python is that numbers are always going to be rounded down. No matter how high this decimal is over here, it's always going to be rounded down. So as you can see right now, it says 3.666. And with the floor division operator, we're still going to get three. And now the final arithmetic operator to show you is the exponential power operator. So as you can see, by adding two asterisks, we can go ahead and multiply it to the power of three. So 11 to the power of three is gonna be 1,331. For an easier example, we can go to two to the power of three, which should be eight. And there we go. And that covers the arithmetic operators. Up next, we need to cover the comparison operators, which are used for logic statements. We can get rid of all of this, and we're going to create a new variable called Boolean. And the first thing we're going to check is if 10 is more than five by using this arrow over here. And we're going to find out the result first by typing in result, followed by a comma and inserting the Boolean. So now when we go ahead and run the program, you're going to notice the result is going to be stated as true because 10 is more than five and comparison operators return either true or false. These are the only two states it can return. So if we actually reverse that to 10 is less than five, we're going to get false as an outcome because that is false. We also have the equal to operator, which checks if two elements are the same. Not to be confused with the assignment operator, we need two equal signs to make this work. So here it's going to check whether 10 is equal to five, and that is false of course, but if we change this to 10, it's going to return true. And this does not have to be with numbers. This can also be with text. We can type in is text equal to banana, and the answer is false. But if we change it to text, we're going to get a result of true. Next, if we actually change this back to banana, we have the not equal to operator. And this checks whether whatever we have initially is not equal to the second variable. So this will return true because text is not equal to banana. We can also add the number there and add five here. And since 10 is not equal to five, the result is still going to be true. But as soon as we add something such as 10, we're going to get a result of false. Now, earlier I showed you that we can use the arrows to check whether something is greater than or less than another value. But what happens if we have to check if it's the same value, such as 10 is more than 10? This is going to return false because of course 10 is the same as 10, 
but it's not greater than 10. So there's actually another operator for this, and this is the greater than or equal to operator. So now it's going to check whether it's greater than or equal to 10, which will return true because 10 is equal to 10, even though it's not greater than 10. And this works the other way around as well. So if it's less than 10 or equal to 10, it's going to return true. If we add five here, it's going to return false. And finally, we need to move on to the logical operators. So right here, we're going to write something such as text is equal to text. So this is true, of course, because they are both the same. And if 10 is more than five, then this should return true because what we're doing here by adding the and symbol is adding the condition that both of these have to be true for the entire result to return true. So if this expression is false or this expression is false, it's going to return false. But since both of them are true, we're going to get true as a return. And we can add as many of these and statements as we want. And we're just going to add five is more than 10 to add something that's false. And you're going to notice it's going to say false because even though these two are correct, this one is false, so everything is going to be false. And also it's worth mentioning that if both of them are false, it's also going to return false. So and only works if everything inside this expression is true, like that. But now let's pretend we only want one of these to be correct for everything to work. Well, there's another operator for this case, and this is the or operator. And this just checks that at least one of the following is correct. One of the following is true. So if text equals text is true, or if 10 is less than five is true, it's going to return true. And the result is going to be true for this one because at least one of them is true. If neither of them are true, it's going to return false. If both of them are true, it's going to return true but at least one of them has to be true. So we can also do the same thing as earlier and write text equal to banana. So now we have three and you can do this for as many as you want. It's just to combine these together and make it a bit faster for finding out whether something is true or false. Now for the last example, I have to go ahead and create another variable, which is called is connected. And we're going to set this one to false. So this is just to pretend that there's some sort of connection. And in this example, we're going to be using the not operator. So if it is not connected, this is going to return true because this checks that whatever statement we have here is false. So the result of course is going to be true, but if we have a connection and we are connected, then this is going to be true. So this is going to say, Hey, you are connected. Now we have to return false because you are connected instead of not connected. So this one actually is probably the most confusing one to learn. It's not hard to learn, it's just confusing sometimes. But with that being said, I think we covered all of the basic operators we need to know for Python. And don't worry because we will be using these a lot in the following projects. But with that being said, I will see you guys in the next lesson.